Hello, 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 hello. This is Larissa with Be You Beautiful One. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you are here. Well, guys, today is day five of week two, and I decided to go ahead and pre record just in case I'm not able to come on live. So I hope you guys will join me in this fellowship chat opportunity that we have to fellowship with one another. I am not positive that I will be able to chat with you guys because again, I will be busy preparing for uh, tomorrow's festivities, the baby shower of my dear sister friend and her first baby. So uh, I'm not for sure how this is gonna play out, but I just ask that you pray for me as a friend, as a sister friend, um, as a, I call myself a God auntie. <laughs> and uh, just uh, pray for us as we prepare and celebrate uh, this bundle of miracle joy, you know? So God is so, so good. He is so awesome. All right, let's go ahead and jump into prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you. <sighs> For you are wonderful. You are mighty. You are excellent in all of your ways. You are simply incredible. You are just awesome and i choose to serve you lord i choose to give you praises i choose to worship you i choose to trust you i choose to seek you father god and i ask that you sit here among your people dwell with us in this place have a seat on the throne of praises of your people Father God, I ask you to bless this moment of fellowship and study time with each other. Father God, that, that our eyes are opened, our hearts are open to you, our ears are open to you, and that we will come calling when you when you we will answer the call that you have placed upon us we will be the ones who will go out and spread the good news that you have commissioned us to spread father god i ask you just to remove me decrease me you be increased you be magnified you be lifted on high father god that your name will be glorified and will be praised, Father God, and all men will be drawn to you and will bow down and confess you as Lord and ask for forgiveness and receive the gift of salvation through the Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the gift that keeps on giving the Holy Spirit. I ask you to bless this time of fellowship and study, Father God. May it bring you glory and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so we are on week two, day five, which means that we are on lesson 10. Whew, it's already going by so fast, you guys. We are on lesson 10, so fast. So this one is going to be um, dealing with he sees. So I can't wait to dive into this lesson. And we're going to be looking at Psalm 10. And so let's go ahead and read Psalm 10. And I am reading from my NLT version. In my life application Bible. And I love that this Bible gives you a basic theme of what this Psalm is going to be about. It says, why do the wicked succeed? Although God may seem to be hidden at times, we can be assured that he is aware of every injustice. 
every injustice. And this author is anonymous, but they um, they link it most likely to David. Uh, many ancient manuscripts combine Psalm 9 and 10. Psalm 9 was definitely written by David. So, okay, let's go ahead and read Psalm 10. Oh, Lord, why do you stand so far away? Why do you hide when I am in trouble? The wicked arrogantly hunt down the poor. Let them be caught in the evil they plan for others. For they brag about their evil desires. They praise the greedy and curse the Lord. Okay. The wicked are too proud to seek God. They seem to think that God is dead, yet they succeed in everything they do. They do not see your punishment awaiting them. They sneer at all of their enemies. They think nothing bad will happen to us. We will be free of trouble forever. Their mouths are full of cursing, lies, and threats. Trouble and evil are on the lips are on the tips of their tongues. They lurk in ambush in the villages, waiting to murder innocent people. They are always searching for helpless victims, like lions crouching in hiding. They wait to pounce on the helpless. Like hunters, they capture the helpless and drag them away in nests. Their helpless victims are crushed. They fall beneath the strength of of the wicked. The wicked think God isn't watching us. He closed his eyes and won't even see what we do. Mm. Arise, O Lord. Punish the wicked, O God. Do not ignore the helpless. Why do the wicked get away with despising God? They think God would never hold us to account. But you see the trouble and grief they cause. You take note of it and punish them. The helpless put their trust in you. You defend the orphans. Break the arms of these wicked, evil people. Go after them until the last one is destroyed. The Lord is king forever and ever. The godless nations will vanish from the Lamb. Lord, you know the hope of the helpless. Surely you will hear their cries and comfort them. You will bring justice to the orphan and oppress, so mere people can no longer terrify them. Amen? That is good news right there. You will bring justice to the orphans and the oppressed, so mere people can no longer terrify them. God hears our cries and he comforts us. He knows our hopes. We are victorious people. We are victorious people. We are victorious. Okay, Psalm 10. God will never forsake his own. And we could praise him right in the midst of life. This psalm does not indicate its author, though it is commonly believed to be a psalm of David and a continuation of Psalm 9. The psalm opens with the plea of why the Lord had hidden himself. The beauty of David is not that he is without struggle, but that he ran to God and God again. So I think that is a, an important distinguish, distinguishing characteristic of David to know, because I know like when I really started to understand the storyline of, not to say I really understood the storyline, but when I was starting to, it was starting to stick to me, um, I would always be like, well, why does God consider him? after his own heart because David 
he committed some sins. Now he killed. He was an adulterer, you know. <laughs> so um, he did some stuff, but he was yet considered God's after God's own heart. And God declared that on him. But the, the key thing is that although he may have had struggles, David ran to God again and again. He allowed his struggles and even his own sin to only draw him closer to the Father. So just because you sin, just because you have struggles and so forth, does not give you a reason to stop trying to draw closer to God. If anything, it should propel you to move closer to God. The Lord never leaves his people. And in moments when he seems distant, we can take comfort that he will walk through the fire with us. Hidden, but still present. There may be times when it seems to us that he has hidden himself. And we do not understand his plan. And yet, even then, we can know that he is still there. Amen. This psalm describes the wicked. The description shows their many sins, but all are rooted in pride. Our sin is also rooted in pride and a deeper love for ourselves than God. Pride keeps us from seeking the Lord, as mentioned in verse 4. And the wicked are characterized by living as if they were, as if there is no good but themselves. Lord, let this not be true of us. Amen. Amen. And again, we have, we have examples of this still in today's era okay different people same kind of game that tries to be thrown in by the enemy of god you know um whether it's in your own home or whether it's being played out you know globally on a global stage or nationwide stage local stage we see this kind of thing day in day out where pride gets in the way of of humility and a humility gets uh, a lack of humility stops you from um having a heart of thanksgiving a heart that can be corrected by god a heart that can be led by the holy spirit a heart that can say god love me therefore i love you no matter what you know and so pride is is big and i think oftentimes we look at the horrendous pride as an issue but sometimes pride could be those subtle identifiers that will keep us from drawing close to God in a way that we should. And so we have to ask God to, when we're reflecting on ourselves, we have to ask God to show us where pride is, is a root issue so that God can work so that we can allow God to work on those areas of our lives. Um, because pride could be a real challenge, I'm telling you. Um, okay, in verse 12, it says the psalmist cries out to God in prayer. Two different Hebrew names of God are used here. Lord is Jehovah or Yahweh, the covenant name of God. God is El, which means strength, might, or almighty. The psalmist is praying for God to rescue all of his to the psalmist is praying for God to rescue in all of his attributes. So David is like calling or whoever is the author is basically calling God to use all of his attributes to rescue <laughs> him, you know, so God, everything I'm asking you to make a way out. 
I'm asking you to be an ever-present help. I'm asking you to be sufficient. I'm asking you to be sovereign. I'm asking you to be peace. I'm asking you to be an avenger. I'm asking you to be my banner. I'm asking you to be joy. I'm asking you to be love and comfort. Guide me. Just going down the list, all of your attributes that speak to your character, show up God <laughs> and rescue. <laughs> and I think it's okay for us to know that we can call on God because God wants us to depend on him, not on yourself, but on him. The psalmist is praying, oh Lord, keep your covenant and your command, your promises to me. Oh God almighty, rescue me in your mighty strength. The psalmist comes boldly in faith and we can as well in Hebrews 4 and 16. We are pleading on the basis of who he is. And as we cry out to him, our hearts are reminded that he is faithful and we will be faithful to us and he will be faithful to us as well. The psalm ends with the song of thanksgiving for all he has done, all he will do, and for who he is. This faithful covenant, this faithful covenant, this faithful covenant keeping almighty God cry, hears the cries of his people. This faithful covenant keeping Almighty God hears the cries of his people. He come, We come in prayer not to plead our case, but to plead his character. We come in prayer not to plead our case, but to plead his character. We cry out to him, Lord, you are faithful. Be faithful to me. Lord, you are a comforter. You are the comforter. Comfort me. He has been faithful in the past and we can sh be sure that he will be faithful again. Amen. Lord, you have heard the desires of the humble. You will strengthen their hearts. You will listen carefully doing justice for the fatherless and the oppressed, so that mere humans from the earth may terrify them no more. Psalm 10, verse 17 through 18. Question one. Reflect on some instances in your life where God might have felt far away. How does this psalm bring clarity to, to such situation? Do you trust that the Lord will not forsake you? I personally have had moments where I felt like God is far away, further than I care to, for him to, for me to feel that way. But I also understand that feelings can be deceptive and that my faith is based on God, not by what I see, but on God's promises, his word, you know, um, and my hope could be built up through his word, through praise and worship and prayer and acts of services unto the Lord. And so I think it's important for me that when he feels far away that I reevaluate what I'm doing or not doing and ask God to lead me and guide me and help me. But no matter what, I know that God is here. I know that God is everywhere. I know that he is Emmanuel and it has been Emmanuel that has been of comfort to me when I felt all alone, when I felt like I had no one to turn to or nowhere to go. And so um, I know that God is able. I know that he's a very present help. And when I feel that he's far away, I have to do a self evaluation because even if everything around me is chaotic, I want to make for sure I'm connected to God, that I'm abiding in him 
And just like with a plant, if a plant is um, torn away from the 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 roots or uh, the main vein of the plant, that portion of the branch is gonna die. It's gonna turn colors. It's going to um, die. Or if something is blocking the nutrients from getting to that branch of the plant, it's not flowing from the root up to the main stem of the plant into the branches, well, then that will also cause death. And so more likely that's what it is. I'm not being rooted in God somewhere. And because of that, I feel mal malnutritious. I'm not getting the supplements that I need from his word, from time with him and his presence, from praise and worship, from um, acts of services um, on behalf of God. And so therefore, I feel a uh, distance from God. And so therefore, I have to ask God to lead me guide me correct me and uh, be a hedge of protection around me so that i can continue to grow in him that's why god says that's why jesus says if you abide in me i will abide in you that's because it's a relationship thing there's something that needs to take place for growth to continue to manifest I put when I was living deeply in sin and was trying to get out of it on my own strength. That's when I felt the most distance when I didn't fellowship with God through prayer, praise and worship and studying his word. Question two. Reread verse 17. In what ways does this verse give you hope and comfort in the character of God? So let's reread that really quick. <laughs> Excuse me. It says, Lord, you know the hopes of the help, the hope, the hopes of the helpless. Surely you will hear their cries and comfort them. And so for um, God knows our needs, our desire. He knows what we hope for. He knows when we're being oppressed. He knows when we're being bullied, mistreated, taken advantage of. God knows. And sometimes it's opportunities for us to learn. Other times God is doing something in the back. Ground. And we may not know exactly what that is, but God is is close to those who are brokenhearted. He takes care of those who are are needy um, in need. You know, there's God is a way maker. God is a provider, and I believe it's ever more important that when God is is when we rely on God as our source, our provision, that we should be the arms and feet of God because he is going to send us exactly to who he needs us to go to, to, to help in times of trouble, in times of need. And sometimes that could be a financial help, that could be help through donations, that could just be uh, uh, help in, in service, time. Um, it could be help uh, praying for someone, uplifting someone, encouraging someone, you know, spending time with someone who needs companionship. God knows what we hope for. But a lot of times those hopes can be fulfilled when we become the hands and feet of God and do his work and answer his call. He will fulfill us. He will satisfy us. And I truly believe that because I know what I 
and feeling some kind of way about something that may not be able to put my hand on it but it's good when you could go and sit someone who is who may be lonely who may be going through grief who may be sick to help others you know because that's how a guy helps us when i think about times of trouble in my life or my family life god we always thank god for when people showed up on his behalf and whether that was a um whatever way that was whether it was um to just sit with us um, because of grief you know there was just nothing that could be said or done but to know that someone was thinking about us and to know that someone was praying and um to sing songs and and share reflect you know um, express our thoughts and feelings. Sometimes it was food. Sometimes it was clothing. Sometimes it was shelter. Sometimes it was transportation. You know, there's just so much that God, we can do on behalf of God when he leads us to be the ones that provide comfort and hope because we are serving others out of the act of love and kindness and forbearance and compassion and just because God loves us first and his love is so great that we want to reflect the love of God so yeah I said God knows we need help he knows our desires he hear our cries and will comfort he is indeed my father as my father. He is with me through it all. Through it all. And then the last question statement is, think about what it means to plead the character of God in prayer. As you read this psalm, spend time in prayer, praising God for who, for his good character and the attention he gives to those in distress plead his character i put i need to know god's character in order to plead his character because i know his character and attributes i could state his character in the area to give praise thanksgiving and submit requests and so um um <laughs> you know if if someone asks you to do something that is not necessarily something you do or in you you may not be as quick to do it depending on what it is um you know but if someone says um you are a joy to be around therefore i receive joy that's a powerful statement because you're calling out someone's character someone's attribute when you walk in the room your presence automatically brings peace lord therefore you are my peace i need your peace god give me peace father you love me you love me your love is ever abounding Father, I need your love like never before. And so it's almost like reinstating the character of God and recognizing who he is, his character, and then applying that to your life and understanding that God is love and that because he is love, he loves me. Because he is love, he saved me. Because he is love, he is building up this kingdom family. Because he is love, I have the promise of eternal life through the blood of Jesus Christ. And so this is something I am learning. Not to just recite scripture but to really 
make it practical in a relationship. Because I have to tell you the truth. That's always been one of my struggles. I've never been. Or I don't think I have been the kind of person who can say those things very easily. And so I love when there's something new that I can pull from to help me love God, to help me express myself. Because remember, by nature, (laughs) I'm an introvert, so it's hard for me to express, you know. And so that's one thing I've really been working on and it's still hard but I know that once I start doing it I feel better because I feel like I'm relieving that pressure valve I know what I want to say I know what's in my heart but I don't know what how to say it and I don't want to be um you know how in the Bible, um, I think it was the Pharisees or the Sadducees, um, they were praying or or it, I can't remember what group it is, but back in the biblical days, they were just praying to sound good. You know, they wanted to sound good. I don't want to just sound good. I want it to be genuine from the heart. That God doesn't be like, oh, shut up, Larissa. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're so fake. I want him to be like, no, that's my daughter. She loves me. She loves me. And she honors me as her father. She respects me as her father. She reverence me as her Lord. And she stands in awe of all the wonderful things that I'm doing and will do. You know, so... I don't know. I love this, and it it it, take, it 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 it's a different perspective in how to worship God and how to praise God, and I like it. So I hope that there was something that um, you guys could take from this lesson today that would be beneficial to you and your study time, and that will help you grow in your relationship with God because that that's the the key point is building a relationship with God so that we grow in our hope our faith our trust our wisdom our understanding our obedience that we grow in doing the things that he has called us to do and so I want to go ahead and go with um, offering the prayer of salvation. We never know who is going to see these videos, who will click on your names and go to your channels and see your videos. A lot of us who have channels that are content channels who are in the chat room have channels about the love of God or have videos about the love of God. And so... I want to make for sure that, you know, when people come by this channel, at least that they have been um, prayed over um, in regards to the gift of salvation. And so basically, for those who have yet to receive the gift of salvation or who are returning back unto the Lord because you have decided to not follow God, not make him Lord of your life, but you have now, you now want to repent and confess and and receive the gift of salvation. I want you to repeat this prayer of salvation after me. It is a simple prayer. It's not long drawn out, but basically is, is allowing God room in your heart. (laughs) allowing God to take up residence in you and allowing him to help you through this journey called life so that when we pass away in this life on the other side we will have eternal life where there will be no more pain suffering no more tears no more grief and sorrow no more worries no more stress none of that 
Instead, we are going to have a good old praise and worship party. We're going to be in the presence of God, our Savior. And so I want you to be a part of that experience and to have that hope that no matter what is going on on this side of earth, we have expectation that the promises will manifest and that we will be in heaven with God and that we will be able to experience his presence and be a part of the praise and worship party that we have definitely been invited to and have an inheritance in. So please pray this prayer with me. It is the prayer of salvation. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am a sinner, but you died for me. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Take control of my life this day forward. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. 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 So you took the first step to receive the gift of salvation. The gift of salvation is one where Jesus has already paid the price of sin, which is death. And that way we have now uh, been received into the to God's family. We are now his children. You are now the child of God and you are now gifted with the Holy Spirit. And don't be overwhelmed by all of this. Take one step at a time. God will lead you and show you and direct you the way that you ought to go. What I would like for you to do now is if you pray this prayer of salvation, please comment below and let us know that you prayed this prayer of salvation or that you prayed the prayer of salvation, not just to receive the gift of salvation, but maybe that you're returning back unto God. If you prefer, you're more than welcome to email me. My email is listed below at info at beyoubeautiful1.com. And I would love to celebrate you. This community would love to celebrate you, would love to pray with you and keep you uplifted in God. I encourage everyone to find a local church body to be a part of. Let God lead you, guide you, and direct you. If you feel comfortable, you can list what city you're in. Maybe there's someone in that city that can extend an invitation to you and invite you to their church. Um, I'm still a small channel, but this is a starting point, right? Right. Okay. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to fellowship with you, to be led by you, to be guided by you, Father God, to learn how good you are to us as our God, our Father, our Redeemer, our provider, our protector, Father God. You are so good and wonderful and awesome in all of your ways. You are simply incredible. Father God, I praise you and I lift you on high. I pray that this time of fellowship and Bible talk was pleasing to you and is a sweet smelling aroma to you. Now, Father God, I ask that you go with each and every person in this live chat as well as in the replays. Father God, I ask you to gift them with peace beyond understanding, joy beyond understanding, and righteousness. And not only that you give it to us, but that we learn how to receive it, treasure it, Father God, appreciate it, value it, Father God, and learn how to even even demonstrate to others what it means to have your joy and your peace and righteousness. Father God, I ask that you bless us with sweet, sweet sleep in you. Bless our weekend, Father God. Let us have a victorious weekend that is full of of good things and even rest, Father. Father God, I just ask that your name will be glorified through our lives and that men and women will be drawn unto you. Father God, save this world. Save this world, Father God. We need you. We need you. We need you. It is in your 
precious son named Jesus. I pray. Amen. 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 All right, guys, that is all that I have. I will be back on live if God permits on Monday at seven o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I just pray that you are able to see the awesomeness of God all weekend long and that you have a local body that you will go and praise and worship and be held accountable and lifted up in the name of Jesus. Okay, so now I I wish to leave you with this blessing. This blessing was said in my childhood church at the end of every service. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's the Lord smile upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Love you. Bye-bye.